Some of you guys may know that I've been on League of Titans, which is a FIFA 21 live stream competition by Titan Gamers. Not as a player, unfortunately, but as an analyst and commentator. And also because I lend them one of my PCs for the live stream. Y'all always see the audience perspective. But now I will show you guys what goes on behind the scenes. So I hope you enjoy this video. Oh, 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 what a goal! What a... Hello everybody, I'm Julian and today I'm at Chen Hao's new studio and uh, they are going to do their FIFA live stream and I'm, I am I kind of provided them my PC so that they can uh, live stream in uh, 1440p so we're going to just cover the setup it is some equipment that I have personally not seen myself so it's, I thought, you know, why not collab okay, I guess we go come alright, so let's talk about my PC first it's running a 2700X AMD Ryzen 7. It has a 2080 Super Zotac Gaming. Uh, and the thing that is the, the streaming element is the Elgato 4K60. It gives you real-time gameplay. The, the reason why they need a nether card is because two of their capture cards, Razer Ripsaw. These two Razer Ripsaw are actually connected to two cameras. I mean, one camera each lah, that they can have two camera set up with a gaming uh, card. Actually, they need three capture cards to do this live stream, so they were missing one. So I'm like, you know, I have one lying around in my room and I'm not using it. Why not have my PC and you can live stream everything? And the 2080 Super is really good for encoding as well, although you still can encode with the 2700X, no problem, but you know, you have choices. Especially when you're not using the PC to game and because you, we are using a PS5 that I will show you guys later. But other than that, it's just a regular PC. You know, we got 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM and just regular SSDs and all this kind of thing. Other than that, let's look at the other hardware. Okay, so what we have on the table, Rodecaster Pro. So this is where you can add microphones and you can control them. Basically, it's a mixer. Four XLR ports, so you can see there's the knobs here. So if, if let's say one mic is too loud than the other, you can just, you know, push down the so knobs. So you have the Stream Deck Mini, so you can, you know, change your scenes easily, software. Uh, we have the Atom Mini by Blackmagic Design. This is actually what the rip saw is supposed to do. They have options, you know. This one is actually pretty interesting. You have two ways of changing scenes. Either software, which is the Stream Deck or a hardware where you can press a physical button and they will physically control it in hardware. The cameras they are using are the A7 III, both with zoom lenses so that they can go wider or closer if they want to. There are two dynamic microphones. These microphones provide clean audio and do not pick up background noise. For lights, they are using two Aperture 300D Mark II. It's pretty much industry standard when it comes to video lighting. And last but not least, of course, we have the PS5. I forgot to mention that the biggest reason why I offered my PC with the Elgato 4K 60 Pro is because of the 4K pass-through. Without a 4K capture card with 4K pass-through, the PS5 will be forced to play games at 1080p or whatever pass-through the game capture has. And if that is so, you might as well play it on a PS4. So to summarize everything, here is a diagram. First, you have the PC with the capture card and the PS5 will be connected to the capture card by HDMI. And the capture card will be connected to the TV by another HDMI. You have two additional capture cards to connect to the PC by USB. These two capture cards are connected to the cameras by HDMI. You have the audio mixer that connects to the PC by USB and the two dynamic microphones are connected to the audio mixer via XLR. You have a Atom Mini which is also a capture card that theoretically can add up to 4 cameras. And lastly, a Stream Deck Mini that is connected to the PC by USB that can be used to change scenes for the live stream. So the audio, camera and gameplay output will go to OBS and OBS will encode the footage and send it to the live stream platform, which in this case is YouTube. While this setup is nothing compared to any esports event, it's still a pretty extensive setup. For comparison, the average streamer needs a computer with a good CPU and GPU, webcam, and a USB microphone. Even your headset mic is good enough. And how it works is that the PC is used to game and stream at the same time and this is what most Twitch streamers use. At the end of the day, it's how much production you want in your live stream. And what Titan Digital Media is doing is no joke. 
great production and great setup. Now they are taking it one step further by doing a 12 hour New Year live stream. Which if you are watching this video on New Year's Eve, it should be taking place now. And I will be there for the FIFA segment to pwn their asses. <laughs> so if you're free after watching this video, come join us for the live stream. Uh, but first, like the video la. Like the video, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to do that, yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, shameless. Other than that, I hope you found this video insightful. Do let me know in the comments what other setup you want to see. You want to see like what banana, NOC, more of Chen House. Uh, you know, even their, their main channel stuff. I don't know. Just let me know whether they want to approve or not. I don't know lah. But you all comment to... I want to know what you all want to see lah, basically. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a happy new year. And I am done. 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 Next week, we're going to do another 3090 video right here. Whoop. Whoop. Mm. Mm. Bye bye.